some places just make you feel a certain way. Like how a waterfall makes you feel at peace. Some places evoke many different emotions, such as dread, fear, sadness, or even contentment. Many people claim that the town of New Harmony has a certain kind of energy, one you can feel while you're there. This is a town with a very unusual history. For many reasons, it's one of the most mysterious places that you'll find in Indiana. It was once settled by an ancient people that built tombs along the Wabash River. In the early 1800s came an esoteric religious group, one that was waiting for the end of the world. And thereafter, a wealthy industrialist, a student of the occult, bought the entire town. He had a vision of a utopian city influenced by his occult teachings. While all these groups are now gone, they left behind many artifacts, unusual structures, religious symbols, perhaps even the supernatural footprints of an angel. But without a doubt, they left behind a strange and peculiar legacy. This is the mysterious town of New Harmony, Indiana. In ancient times, the Wabash River was a major waterway for an unknown people. And along its banks, they practiced a culture and mysterious religion. Some say they left behind a certain energy, one you can feel even today. Not just along the river bank, but the entire town. Through the years, I've been here many times and in many seasons. I've always felt the peace of a small town. It feels tranquil and safe. But it also has something else. The town has a surreal quality, like a portal to another time. Strangely, all sound seems to be dampened and muffled, almost like a huge invisible dome has been placed over the city. Maybe it's because the buildings and shrubbery are so close together, absorbing sound. That would be a logical explanation. But many people have told me that they agree. Sound is absorbed here. Something special is going on, invisible to the naked eye. In 1814, a large group of religious people, called the Harmonists, sold their worldly possessions, left Pennsylvania, and settled here. With money pooled together, they bought over 20,000 acres and built 180 homes. In their minds, this would be the last place they ever lived until the end of the world, which they thought was imminent. Their leader was George Rapp, born at Germany in 1757. He called himself a prophet and strayed greatly from his Lutheran beginnings, adopting mystic beliefs in veneration of a goddess named Sophia. While the Harmonists started with log cabins, they progressed into more civilized frame homes and brick structures. All of them looked very similar. They would get up very early, conduct a variety of trades, and in the evening, meet together at places like this one, a meeting house. Everyone was expected to be celibate 
as they waited for the end of the world. At the center of town, they built two churches. The last one was very large and made of brick. But today, only the portal of that church remains. The area where they worshipped is now a garden with a fountain. This was the epicenter of their faith and rituals, and there's a sense of that spirit today. Like a well that runs deep, it's difficult to know the source. But the clues are everywhere. Just outside town, they built a labyrinth. Unlike a maze, where you can get lost, a labyrinth will take you to the center if you just keep walking. The labyrinth pattern is of ancient origin and seen many places across the world. For the harmonist, it was a spiritual exercise, a place of meditation and connection to God. Back in town, the harmonists built a large granary to store and process their grains. The town was, by all appearances, successful. But some of the faithful started to wonder, was God coming back soon like their prophet had promised? Frederick Rapp, George Rapp's adopted son and second in command of the harmonist, went to St. Louis, Missouri. Some might call it a religious pilgrimage. He brought back to New Harmony a large, curious piece of limestone that immediately caused a sensation. On the limestone slab were footprints, ones that had been there for ages, perhaps even centuries. Some say that Frederick Rapp himself claimed they were footprints of Gabriel, the archangel mentioned in the Bible. While others say that was just a rumor to make the harmonists look like crazy religious people. Controversial even in its time, the fossilized rock is considered millions of years old. By geological timelines, the footprints could not exist. Theories range from outright hoax, carved by ancient people, to being a genuine paranormal artifact. It is truly an item of curiosity. Within these brick walls, there are Native American mounds. The harmonist, recognizing this as a prehistoric cemetery, buried their people here as well. When their former church was demolished, the bricks were utilized in making the wall, enclosing a resting place for both the ancient people and harmonists. But much stranger things were yet to come. In 1825, after only 11 years, the harmonists sold 20,000 acres to Robert Owen a rich industrialist. They boarded a steamboat on the Wabash and left Harmony forever. This began a new era of mystery as Robert Owen brought many strange beliefs. He was an early advocate of socialism, new age ideas, was an opponent of religion, and later joined the spiritualist movement that communicated with the dead. For certain, the town would never be the same. His goal was to establish an exotic, utopian society and rename the town New Harmony. He had very big plans. As a socialist commune, it would be a place for liberal studies and education, 
as well as a center for the arts and sciences. He was joined by William McClure, a man that retired at only 34 years old. William had made a fortune in the mercantile business and was interested in Robert's social experiment. He donated a large sum of money and became a co-founder of the new town. Just like Robert Owen, he had a strong bias against religion, saying that it was all a delusion and there was nothing beyond the grave. Much like today, rich people were shaping the beliefs and guidelines of society. The town went from being based on God to being based on humanism. Some say that brought a divine curse on everyone involved. Robert Owen's utopia ended in only two years, dissolving by 1827. The experiment was an economic failure and the beginning of many future losses. By 1828, he'd moved back to London. He continued to promote his socialist ideas, but over time became more and more radical to the point of madness. He became active in spiritualism, trying to communicate with the dead through seances. He even wrote several books on the subject, the once great Robert Owen lost his entire fortune and lived off a trust provided by his sons. In his final days, he would speak of his grand socialist plans and then the spirits of dead people that he'd contacted. William McClure, whom had co-founded New Harmony and attracted an impressive number of scientists and engineers became ill in 1827, the same year the social experiment dissolved. He never quite recovered. He's remembered as the father of American geology, one of America's great map makers and philanthropists. He left money to establish 160 libraries, all memorials to his legacy. But the end of his life was much less dignified. At San Angel, Mexico, where he went to live for the warmer climate, his grave was robbed soon after he was buried. He was stripped of his fine clothes, and his naked body was thrown over the cemetery wall. In reality, there was something beyond the grave. Dishonor. His body vanished without a trace, as if he was never born. In most of the libraries that he funded to immortalize his name were either renamed or torn down. Robert Dale Owen, Robert Owen's oldest son, followed in his father's footsteps. He helped run the town, became a social reformer, a member of the Indiana House and U.S. House of Representatives, he secured funding for the Smithsonian and was on the Smithsonian Board of Regents. That federal funding has continued nearly 200 years. Just like his father was also anti-religion, was involved in the spiritualism movement, and wrote two books disputing the New Testament. In 1875, he was admitted to the Indiana Hospital for the Insane. He died two years later. William Owen was editor of the New Harmony Gazette, superintendent of the general store, and also ran the town while his father was away. He tragically died at only 39 years old. David Dale Owen became the first geologist of Indiana, explorer, artist, medical doctor, and completed geology surveys all across the Midwest. He built his own museum at New Harmony for his massive collection of curiosities, collected across Indiana and the surrounding states. 
but he tragically died at only 54 years old. His large collection of artifacts, his legacy, which took up an entire warehouse, have been lost to history. His brother Richard Owen fared no better. After David died, Richard became the second state geologist and first president of Purdue University. However, he died in 1890 from drinking formaldehyde. It was labeled as medicated water. And finally, Robert Owen's daughter, Jane Dale Fonterloy, who also helped run the town and created her own seminary, died at only 55 years old. Were these truly curses or just misfortunes of a small town? If you're looking for the unusual and curious, this is your sign. For a fact, there are things here you might not see anywhere else in the world. When William McClure died, he left funding for 160 working men's institutes. There were 144 in Indiana and 16 in Illinois. This one was established in 1838. It's the oldest continually operating library in the state of Indiana, and it houses a phenomenal museum of unusual curiosities. On the first floor, you can learn how looms work. as well as use the library. But on the second floor, prepare to be wowed by a museum worthy of Indiana Jones. You'll see everything from geology, paleontology, local history, and fine art. But also, the truly bizarre. This is an eight-legged cow. These kind of defects don't happen very often. But when they do, they often don't live very long. Also on the second floor, you'll find two dead people. Dr. Edward Murphy was a local doctor and philanthropist who funded the Working Men's Institute. He died in 1910, and his wife also, only a few days later. They were then both cremated, their ashes combined in an urn, and now they are permanent residents of the museum. Right next door is the Edward Murphy Auditorium built in 1911. It's certainly a legacy that's lasted well over 100 years. But the mysterious legacy of New Harmony continues in many places all over town. At the Athenaeum, you can take a guided tour of the town and its many unusual places. You can also rent a golf cart. The only stipulation, no pictures, video, or ghost meters in any of the old buildings. You can only wonder why that's a rule. Behind the Athenaeum is a mysterious structure called the Healing Palindrome. There are 20 stones in a semicircle. They tell a strange story about an alternative universe. Across the world, there are 140 similar sites on six continents and in 30 countries. 
all with very little explanation. A short distance from the Athenaeum is the Cathedral Labyrinth. It's modeled after the Labyrinth at Chartres Cathedral in Paris. That one was built in the 12th century, over 900 years ago. With all of these structures, there's a very palpable spiritual element. But quite possibly, the most unusual structure is the roofless church. It is exactly like it sounds, a place of worship without a roof. Inside the walls are places to pray and meditate. The walls remind me of the Harmonist Cemetery. And at the western end, what looks like a giant dome with multiple interpretations. It reminds me of the invisible dome the one I envision above this town. One that dampens all sound and creates a sense of peace. A peace I've enjoyed for many decades on every trip to this town. And maybe having a mysterious, peaceful place to go isn't a bad thing. Nor is realizing We'll never know or understand everything. From abstract works of art. To the beliefs of other people. Somewhere is a place where our souls can rest. <laughs>